Smashboards is a hugely influential message board site dedicated to almost everything related to the Super Smash Bros. series in general. It was launched in 2001 and is actually still up now, and while it isn't as well known as popular nowadays, it's still an amazing community which I'm a part of and is still very well respected in the Smash community. Smashboards has had a huge history beyond what the majority of people know about it though, and so that's why we put together a Smashboards iceberg filled with all sorts of information related to the site. Me and some other users worked on it, so I'm not fully responsible for this. And so yeah, I'm sure you all know how icebergs work. Information at the top will be more and more well known. And as we go on, it gets more obscure. I also do want to say that most of the information will be generally about the site and culture of it, rather than how it's influenced the Smash community as a whole. Yeah, I'll still talk about both of those things. There are still a lot of examples of it, but there will also be plenty of other stupider stuff you might not expect, because this site as a whole is not really what you would expect all the time. Huge shout out to the other Smashboards members who helped me out with this, and the community with who I've been with all this time. I also will be mentioning a few specific users and show screenshots of posts by specific users, so please don't harass them or be annoying or anything like that to them. Alright, let's get into it. Creation threads are a popular type of thread with the purpose of making a hypothetical new game. It started out with Smash Infinite, a thread dedicated to making a sequel to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. In these threads, the creator suggests ideas for jobs, and participants can then submit content they think should be added and fits the criteria of the job. After Infinite, creation threads had an explosion of popularity, and you can find threads for like almost any idea, a Mario-themed Smash Bros., PlayStation All-Star sequel, Sega Platform Fighter, Mario Kart 9, a fast food mascot platform fighter. There are a lot of things and a lot of people helping out to make hypothetical new games. On a lot of message board sites, you can make posts on your profile, but Smashboards has a weird thing where it shows up on the front page, meaning you can easily interact with each other using profile posts. And you can also comment on other people's posts. This has led to a subculture known as the profile post gang. And personally, profile posting is most of how I use the site. And they get pretty weird sometimes. And a lot of memes on the community have spawned from profile posts, or at least become more popular from them. I mentioned this before, but Smash Infinite is the first and largest creation thread and is dedicated to a sequel to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It is headed up by a user named Venus of the Desert Bloom, and with 453 pages so far, and with almost 50 characters added, it's an absolutely huge project that's set present for a whole new era for the site. There's even a wiki for it too. It's had a huge number of participants, and drama tends to happen a lot, but it's still a really fun community. It recently got its final DLC fighter, 2B, from Nier Automata, meaning the thread is probably going to be coming to a close soon. One core element of the site is newcomer speculation. Users can make threads to talk about which characters they think should be added to Smash, and use them to discuss what their content could be or even things related to the character in general. Unfortunately, after Ultimate's DLC wrapped up, all newcomer threads for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate have been closed, but that hasn't stopped people finding alternative ways to discuss the same things in some threads. There are also now newcomer speculation threads, for Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl and Multiverses as well. They haven't really caught on as much as the Ultimate Days though. I'm sure you all know what tier lists are, but basically they're a ranking of each character's competitive viability according to a community. It's not an objective ranking, because new techniques can be found for different characters, so it is constantly updating, but it's good for showing you what a community thinks at the time about the viability of each character's. Smashboards is basically a hub for discussing tier lists and ranking characters. Many of early tier lists or competitive rankings were created from Smashboards. It was not the first use of tier lists, but it was influential in making them as popular as they are today. The social thread is one of the biggest threads on the site, and is dedicated to just general social things. So like profile posts, but in an actual thread. It also has a pretty distinct subculture, just like profile posts. 
forum games are a pretty ty- common type of thread where normally what happens is one person asks a question and then uh, someone else does a quick response and asks another. It's pretty light, dumb fun and a pretty big part of the site. A user named Ramen Tengoku runs a popular thread dedicated to AMAs for anyone who wants one. AMA stands for Ask Me Anything, so it's pretty much an interview for users. Not that many people actually ask questions in them, but it is still pretty fun, and I recommend every user try doing it at least once. MYM stands for Make Your Move. It's a moveset design contest with a huge community of users who make and read each other's moveset ideas for any characters they want. And they can make movesets of, like, anyone, not even just video game characters. If you want to make a moveset for Frederick Nietzsche, you can. The current iteration of the contest is Make Your Move 25, meaning there's been 25 different ones of these, and it started way back in the Brawl day. Annalyn is an indie game inspired by Pac-Man, about a minor girl who has to avoid snakes and stuff. It's a meme on the site due to how much a user named Fazdu likes the game and talks about it. Although, I feel like I've seen him talking about how he talks about Annalyn way more than he actually talks about Annalyn, you know? Every year, the site has an April Fool's prank, where they change the name and branding of the site to be about something other than Smash Bros. And they also give everyone different profile pictures for the day, which can be really funny when someone doesn't like the profile picture they got. Some notable examples in the past have been Ridley boards, Crash boards, and Fighters boards. And it started in 2015 with Shaq boards, and there's even a museum thread dedicated to cataloging these pranks. Alpha Zealot is a professional Smash player who purchased the site back in 2012 and currently runs most of the business things of the site. In 2012, it was owned by a different company, which is a different entry, so I'll get to that later. There's a user named Pokalego999, and he likes liking stuff. He'll basically consistently like almost every post everyone makes. Sometimes I'll get like 20 notifications, and I'll be surprised until, oh wait, it's just Pokalego. At this point, his name barely registers as a user. It's more like a feature that just appears next to the like button. Super Smash Land is a free-to-play Super Smash Bros. fan game that aims to answer what it would be like if the Super Smash Bros. series got an entry on Game Boy. It was created by Dan Fornace, who later, later went on to make Rivals of Ether, another platform fighter game. So, series. Smash Bros. was used to collaborate on the development of the Super Smash Land game, and it was a huge portion of why it was even made in the first place. Guilty Gear X2 Accent Core Plus R is an entry in the Guilty Gear series that's a meme in the profile post. It started when one person posted about how Guilty Gear X2 Accent Core Plus R is a great game because it has rollback. It's only $15 on Steam. Everyone needs to play it. One of the best fighting games of all time. That original post became a copy pasta, and then for about a day, the profile posts were overtaken by people talking about Guilty Gear X2 Accent Core Plus R, and like, people would just chill for Guilty Gear X2 Accent Core Plus R. Smashboards is such a good advertisement, because I bought the game, like, the day after this happened. It's pretty good, but I don't know if it's necessarily taking over Smashboards worthy. Squidboards is a sister set to Smashboards, themed around the Splatoon series. The layout and format is essentially the same as Smashboards, and people often use it to organize Splatoon matches and tournaments, and they also do some weird things like Smashboards too. The site was formally launched in April 2015, shortly after the release of the first Splatoon game, although the beta version was already created earlier on a freeform software by a user named The Rapture. The site is also owned by Alpha Zealot, and it has a lot of the same administrators as Smashboards does. Wave dashing is a widely known technique using competitive Super Smash Bros. Melee, where one air dashes diagonally downwards to give them more momentum quickly. It's one of the most well-known melee attacks, and was even later deliberately added to other platform fighters like Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. It was first discovered on Smash Wars, originally known as the Mad Dash. So yeah, another huge part of the competitive fighting game history 
was helped made by Smashwords. Well, apparently this guy already knew about it before the thread, so, uh, whatever. From what I understand, Smashwords is built with code that isn't exactly that secure, so it is prone to messing up sometimes, thus leading to the term Crashwords being coined. It's not just the April Fool's prank. Sometimes the site will crash and be unable to be accessed for a few hours in a day. It is rare, but happens surprisingly frequently. A prominent profile poster is named Alexala, and he is known for liking Ashley, a character from the WarioWare series. It's almost always his profile picture, and he talks about her a lot. And Red. He likes Red, too. Okay, so I wish absolutely nothing bad on this user, but we've been in a lot of arguments in the past, and I don't exactly think very highly of him. It's not just me, because he's been in a lot of arguments with plenty of other users. The topic he tries to argue during most of these, at least how I see it, is that fans of the Pokemon series are stubborn because they won't switch to playing other monster collectors like Yokai Watch, which are basically objectively better games and have better features than the Pokemon series. I can see where the argument comes from, but he definitely does not go about it in a respectful way, and I won't really comment on it much from here. Although, I will say it one time, he said accessibility doesn't matter that much in video games, because apparently uh, paraplegic people can just play video games with their feet. So that's fun. Internal Frickface is a user in Smashboards. He is an artist, and you better watch out if you click on his profile, because you might just get a jump scare from a buff furry man. He's here because a lot of people do not expect buff furry men in the profile post section, and get kind of surprised when they do, in fact, see a buffery man. GamersArtEx is a user on the site a lot of people accuse of being toxic in profile posts and having a bad mindset about the game. I don't really want to comment on this for now, but I feel like at one point this was true. He had frequently posted about it, but from what I've seen, he's changed for the better lately. That is good for him. Again, I won't really comment on it much now. Smashwords has a premium feature, Smashwords Premium, which you can pay extra money for. It's your typical premium service, removes ads, lets you change your name as much as you want, but there's also another feature, pranks. You get to change someone's username to the color pink for one month, and it says pranked on the profile. That is all it does. Stupid stuff like that is why I love Smashwords. I'm bored, so I made a roleplay, is a roleplay thread that has a lot of posts in it. It started with Shaiho Francis Masukin, a shy guy who works for an investment firm in a Final Fantasy themed world. Ashley shows up, guess who was roleplaying as her, and they plot to overthrow the tyrannical government. It's it really weird after that. I haven't used this thread before. Honestly, I'm scared of it. What you need to know is that he was bored, so he made a roleplay. Tankman from Newgrounds is a user on Smashwords. He follows a lot of people. A lot. Back when there were still a few DLC characters left, some users got really desperate about newcomer speculation. And at one point, a user claimed to have found a purple color on the website page of one of the upcoming DLC fighters. This suggested that the new character might use a purple color scheme, which is why the website has the color for them. Maybe Nahubino, Spyro, or maybe, just maybe, we could be getting the one character almost everyone wants for Smash, Big the Cat. People freaked out over it, and for some reason the Smash Infinite thread was at a complete standstill, even though it has nothing to do with it, because everyone was talking about it there. YouTubers like blog content even made a video about it, which is not surprising to be honest if you know what blog content is. Now the thing is, this leak was so easily disprovable. The purple was on every other character's page on the website, meaning Smashboards basically shut itself down for a day because purple. In 2008, Smashboards was purchased by the company Major League Gaming, yes, that one, 
before Alpha Zealot acquired it in 2012. I don't really know about what people's opinions on MLG were during its Smashboards regime, but I do know that people were really excited for Alpha Zealot because he was introducing changes to modernize the site, which had become pretty outdated under MLG at that point. Yes, a thread dedicated to whether or not words that come directly from Sakurai's mouth can be considered kin to the Super Smash Bros. So just kidding. What does the inside of Sakurai's mouth look like? Are there any pictures? The thread was closed pretty quick. So, there's a Wikipedia article about Smashboards. It's a pretty short one, it does not have that much information, but it is pretty cool that it exists. When Sephiroth was released as a DLC character, the popular newcomer Gino came with him as a Mi costume. As a result, the newcomer speculation thread dedicated to him was closed. This was very controversial. A lot of people almost exclusively used the site for the Gino thread, and this whole community was basically shut down just because he was disconfirmed for Smash. A second Gino thread was eventually created after some time, but that one was closed once the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC cycle concluded. Recently, one of the more prominent debates on the site is if Super Smash Bros. Ultimate should really be considered a celebration of gaming history. COGH is an acronym that stands for Celebration of Gaming History, and people often use it as a shorthand in these debates. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has a huge collection of characters from video game history, and a lot of it is represented in the game, but a lot of people say it can't really be considered a true celebration of gaming history, due to the obvious biases about the characters who get added and which parts of the gaming industry get added. For example, Halo is a lot more popular and influential than Banjo and Kazooie, and both are owned by Microsoft. Banjo and Kazooie were added before Master Chief, because they're more highly requested than him, due to the Nintendo origins of the series and Banjo's connection to Nintendo consoles. Doesn't it then suggest that Smash has other priorities from video game history? So should it really be considered a true celebration of gaming history then? It's a debate people have very strong opinions on, and it has lasted a long time now. Smash Sports has a system where they censor swears, but sometimes they censor words that aren't necessarily dirty. What if you want to talk about the Dick Grayson Robin, or Puss in Boots, or even make a multiverse support thread for our Dick Dastardly from Wacky Races? Well, you use alternative names, like Richard Grayson, Richard Dastardly, and Pissin' Boots. You know that cloud platform that randomly appears in the Yoshi story stage? His name is Randall. Randall will always be there for you. You can count on him for support, and also to contribute that much more to the fun, random chaos that is Super Smash Bros. One time, Randall the Cloud had sex inside a tractor, and the semen made Optimus Prime. The name Randall is used to refer to this obstacle in basically all the competitive scene, so I think it's pretty cool that the name comes from a thread on Smashboards, where one person randomly decided, haha, his name is Randall. Okay, smell the characters. In the Brawl days, there existed a thread called Smell the Characters, where People would discuss how each Super Smash Bros. character smells like, and they discuss like they're ancient Greek philosophers. It's funny, honestly, maybe a little gross how they discussed all this. In the end, they decided Captain Falcon is the character who smells the best. Not sure if I agree, but alright. On the topic of stink, there are definitely plenty of threads related to showering, but the one I wanted to point out is this one. This is the only message this user has ever posted. Insert melee player joke here. The thread was closed pretty quick, and you gotta love how passive aggressive mods make their what the fuck is this thread I'm closing it messages. There also is this older thread about how showering is apparently a chore. Smashboards has had its fill of serious discussions and even religious discussions, which is fine. You know, the site is dedicated to much more than Super Smash Bros, so 
it's okay for people to talk about serious things on it. Sometimes, though, people approach those discussions in really disrespectful ways, and nowhere is that better exemplified in a thread titled, Which is Better, Islam or Christianity? Do I even need to explain why that's an uncomfortable way of framing a discussion like this? People were quick to point this out, and the thread was closed quickly. Not only is generalizing religions, which both have billions of followers bad, directly comparing them to say which is better is a problematic thing to do as well. At least it didn't have all the nuances of 2008 Brawl era smash words. At one point, there was an attempt to make a creation thread entirely made up of female characters. I say attempt because the thread was almost immediately shut down due to being transphobic. A rule stated that transgender women would not be allowed to keep politics out of the thread. This was completely out of nowhere and very unfortunate, but the rest of the site's near universal condemnation of this guy shows how welcome this site can be despite sometimes having people like that. Also, the thread owner misinterpreted a reaction image as someone submitting Squidward, and I found that funny. Big Chungus is a famous user in Smashboards who got banned one time because Smashboards just couldn't handle the Chungus. Big Chungus is a martyr, an example of the corrupt Orwellian control of the Smashboards moderation. We will never forget Big Chungus. No, but seriously, I have no idea what happened with him. He probably did something bad, but he took like a day to get banned, and I could not find anything offensive on his profile, so I don't know. When the website was launched in 2002, the name of it was Smash World Forums. It was changed pretty quickly to the name Smash Words we all know today. Nintendo Power is an official Nintendo magazine, and in a 2005 issue, they had a section talking about the competitive scene of Super Smash Bros. Melee. They even mentioned Smash Bros. by name. So, basically, Smash Bros. was officially acknowledged by Nintendo. Neat. I wish Nintendo was still as respectful to the Smash community. Okay, last mention of Ashley in this video. I promise. I couldn't really find the specific post for this, but back in the Brawl days, there was a user who got upset when it was announced that Ashley would be making a cameo in the game, because according to him, people only liked her because she was a lolly. I'm sure there are some people who only like the character because they're disgusting and attracted to her. You know this. This is the Smash community after all. And there are people who made disgusting posts about it like that. But to act like that's the majority of her fan base is really weird. Most of it is just like normal people who aren't attracted to children. At least I hope so. Smashboards is probably the biggest Smash related website in the Western internet space. So it isn't that unreasonable to assume Sakurai might have a lurker account which he uses to see what the community has to do, right? Okay, it's unlikely. Very unlikely, but if Bob gets added to the next Smash game, you'll know why it happened. Okay, this is where the video gets disturbing. So, please click off the video if you're not fine with content like that. Wario Wario Wario, or Wario 3, or Triple Wario, is the name of a user on Smash Boards, known for a lot of things. Certainly as a character, but deep in the underbelly of Smash Boards, people have a theory. A theory that- Wah! What was that? What? Wah! No! Wah!